Hey guys, I'm Xander and today I'm going to be sharing some tips with you guys on how you can rewild your garden. Rewilding is such a cool word nowadays and there's so many rewilding projects out there like the Cairngorms Connect and you may think that these big rewilding projects is the only way you can make a difference to wildlife and my favourite, the insects. But you'd be wrong in thinking that. Is in, it is important to make as many changes as possible in your home. Where's the best place to start? Your garden. Because insects are having a really hard time at the moment, with almost every species in decline, with bees and pollinators in the worst of trouble. So we need to try and reverse this trend. As you can see, I've got a pretty nice insect-friendly garden. But it wasn't always this way. When we first moved, it was filled with all these red stones and no sign that insects had been anywhere near it. So it was my mission to turn it into an insect friendly garden. One year after that day, it's now this. But we still have more to do. We first started off by going to our local garden centre where we asked the experts what kind of plants we'd put in our garden. Taking into account the level of sunshine, the type of soil, and the fact that we wanted a garden suitable for different types of insects. We managed to get a great range of plants, from heather to some small flowering plants, which both flower at different times of the year, ensuring that there's food all year round for the pollinators. As we were downwind from a few trees, we're soon to notice that leaves started piling into our garden. Rather than throwing them away, we created a leaf pile. This leaf pile is amazing for different types of insects that prefer to live in decaying piles of leaves. This is also vital in the winter, as many larvae like to spend their time in leaf litter while preparing for adulthood. However, if you do decide to create a leaf pile, make sure to pick up any litter that falls into it. We've also used some natural resources, such as logs, to create a pathway. This not only clearly shows where to walk, but also creates a more natural boundary for the plants to grow. And this wood in itself will also create a home for beetle larvae and some other plants, such as fungus. Most people would take the weeds and wild gra grasses out of their garden, but we don't. Because the dandelions, weeds and wild grasses create a great shelter for many types of insects and a great food source for pollinators such as bees and wasps. However, remember, no chemicals. Although these chemicals may make the plants look bigger, they are lethal to most species of insects. After planting all this stuff a year earlier, and for the first time, we had insects visiting our garden. Things like butterflies, bees and wasps, which shows that what we are doing is making a great difference. As well as all these flowers in the front garden, we've got some things in the back garden, like the butterfly houses and bee homes and even some bird feeders. Another cool addition to your garden would be a pond. But unfortunately, that's still on our list to be added. Another cool thing that you could do is build an insect hotel and they're really easy to make. All you have to do is get old pieces of wood, pallets and pipes that you would normally throw out. This is a great way to help loads of different species of insects. And this will also give a great place for them to hide and hibernate in winter when the winter gets its toughest. However, I'll do another video on that showing you how easy it is to make these. And after all that, you should find this part super easy. Learn to rewild yourself. This will not only make you appreciate nature more, will also help you learn from it too. Why not sit next to some newly planted flowers and watch the insects fly past? And also make time to stop, look, listen, touch, smell and even taste your surroundings to be part of nature. And I couldn't stress this more. You don't need to be an expert or become one. Simple things like asking a person at the garden centre because they'll be sure to help you. And you don't even need to know the names of the insects that are attracted to your garden. Just be happy that you've made a difference to the insect world. Well, that's it for me today. I hope you take some of this information away from this video and put it to good use. Well, guys, I'll see you next time. Bye!